Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel. Leave me alone, I'm busy farming. Today's video, I want to talk about what I've been doing for my Roma tomato plants. And by that I mean how much I'm fertilizing, how often. So in a little bit, I'll show you some of what I'm doing. Just to give you an overview, at this stage, once I've gotten to flowers and tomatoes, I'm putting down about a half a pound per bed. I have two beds with the Roma tomato plants. About a half a pound of the Never Sink Blend fertilizer and then enough organic compost to cover it. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a few minutes. I have been growing a lot of different ways over the last eight years from hydroponics, NFT, nutrient flow technique, aeroponics in a tower garden, the crack key method, soil in raised garden beds. Now I've moved on to using the techniques that the market garden farmers are using. And I'm also using those techniques in my raised garden beds. So again, half a pound of organic fertilizer with a coating of organic compost. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm doing. to talk to you guys about what I'm doing in growing my Roma tomatoes. These are in Birdie's raised garden beds. I don't think it matters what you're growing them in as long as you have good drainage. But I'm applying the market garden techniques inside these beds just like I'm doing outside in my home market garden. I'm loaded up with racks of tomatoes here. Uh, I'll show you in just a minute, but I believe they're becoming heavy feeders now. So I need to ensure that they're well fed. I have a lot of plants. One, two, three, four, five, six in this bed. Two, three, four, five, six in that bed, in addition to basil. So I'm really pushing the capacity of the bed so what I've been doing once I started to get to where we're flowering a lot of flowers on these I started to apply weekly a dusting of the never sink fertilizer and I'm just coming in here and hand broadcasting it and concentrating a little bit heavier around the base of the tomato plants how much am I using just under a half a pound per bed. I mixed up, or I didn't mix up, I weighed out one pound, and I had enough to give a light fertilizing to this bed over here. Might be out of uh, the camera angle, but it's another birdie's bed. It has a lot of lettuce, one tomato plant, escarole, and kale. Uh, those beds that have that type of vegetable, more leafy greens, maybe once a month. Now. Once I put down my dusting of fertilizer, I'm coming along and putting down a very thin layer, but it's enough to cover the fertilizer of organic compost. This is the compost that I had originally ordered and uh, used to establish my 
home market garden beds outside. I also used it in the birdies raised garden beds. So uh, I find this is working out really well. As I look at the results, I've been growing tomatoes for about eight years, whether it's hydroponically or in the soil or aeroponics, uh, you name it, I've done it. This is probably the best results I've ever seen. And again, I think the key is the organics and the feeding it weekly. So I'll grab the camera in a minute and I'll show you what it looks like with the fertilizer laid out in this other bed. And then I'll show you this one when the compost is down. So you'll get to see what it looks like as I'm covering up the fertilizer. And then I'll come back and give this a watering. Okay, and yeah, just something I wanted to show you guys on why I believe I'm getting success with my tomato plants. Okay, let's take a look at how I've broadcasted the fertilizer, and it might be hard to see, but I'm just trying to get a dusting and focusing, as I said, a little bit more around the base of the plants. Now, I'll come over to this bed, and I'll show you now that it's composted. And again, that's just a thin layer, right? And my goal is to cover as much of that fertilizer as possible. Again, that's the Never Sink uh, blend. Now, racks of tomatoes. I don't want to move that too much, but hopefully you can see where I have tomatoes, they've continued to flower and just continue on from uh, this growth stem right here. There's another rack where you can see how the tomatoes are just continuing They're all the way up here. And you can see all the new growth and flowers. Uh, I'm 5'10 and we're almost at the top of my head. So I've been running my trellis to support them. I probably should have removed more suckers. Here's a little bit different angle. So one of the shorter plants, about three feet, and we work our way up. You can see I've only got two and a half, three feet left before I hit the top of my greenhouse, which is eight feet. Obviously I'm losing a little because of the bottom. But look how vibrant the basil is. We're making fresh pesto. Look at all the new growth up top. Can you see all those flowers? It's everywhere. So again, I think what's leading to this type of success is the fact that I am feeding them weekly and putting compost. There's another two racks right there. I mean, everywhere you look, we just have really healthy Sorry about that, we have some leaves in the way. Some healthy racks of tomatoes. Okay. Tangled up once again. Okay, so now that I've got my fertilizer down and the compost on top, I like to water it in. If I've gotten any fertilizer or compost on any of my leaves like I've got right here, I just gently hold them and rinse them just to get that off. It's not going to hurt it, but this is one reason why I actually enjoy hand watering and also hand pollinating it allows me time to get close up close and personal and see if i have any issues going on if something needs to be trimmed it's 
So that's something else that I've started doing as things are getting a little bit higher up. The other day I came back and I trimmed a lot of the bottom growth, got it out of the way. That'll improve the airflow. I've been trimming my basil. I've got some uh, radishes that I overplanted in my round bed. I have to get in here and add more trellises. Uh, they're getting too big. I have to get those out. But again, another thing I believe is helping me get these results is maintaining my plants. If I see any leaves like this one, normally I would cut it. It's looking a little stressed. It's not going to do the plant any good, so I'm trying to come through and eliminate these. Uh, I've been trellising up. I need to do more work, as you saw that branch right there. So that's kind of what I'm doing to feed these tomato plants on a weekly basis. I have one or two other tomato plants in some of the beds throughout the greenhouse. They're from suckers that I've cloned. And I've done videos in the past on that. I can show you guys again. Uh, what it does is it gets me to production much quicker. This plant, maybe it's two and a half feet tall. I already have a rack going and I have new flowers starting up top. So when you take that sucker off an existing plant and you clone it, it's a replica of what's growing. So if you got a healthy plant, you're going to get to production much quicker as far as your flowers starting. And again, I'm hand pollinating. I love to do it. I come in here every morning, sometimes in the afternoon. It's therapeutic. What? You don't hand pollinate your tomato plants? All right, on a serious note, I hope you found this video helpful. This is what I'm doing in my home market garden. And again, I think the results are speaking for themselves. I'm 5'10", not quite there yet. I've got a total of eight feet. I'm gonna be a little limited out here based on my a cable I have running from the front to rear. Uh, I've let these top growths really go at it, meaning I haven't uh, trimmed back suckers like this here. Initially, when these plants were down lower, I was cutting my suckers and I was putting some root hormone on the stem and putting it in my six cell seed starting trays and I'd get them to root, and that gave me a cloned tomato plant. I recently had the honor of meeting Jim Kovaleski. He's a market gardener in Florida, and I donated several Roma tomato plants to him for his personal consumption. Uh, he's someone that I'm a fan of watching his uh, farming techniques through my buddy Pete over at Green Dreams TV's channel. It really got me interested in the market garden, specifically the Elliot Coleman method, which Jim references quite a bit. So again, it was an honor to meet him, share some of my tomato plants. I hope he'll enjoy them. Again, that's what you can do with your suckers. I have, oh, at least another six to eight that should be going to Pete over at Green Dreams. I've got basil and some collard greens. Jim Kovaleski also got some basil and collards. So again, I hope you guys are finding this helpful. My videos are not here to tell you what to do. It's to show you what I'm doing, show you the results. If you like the results, maybe you'll check it out, give it a try. For me, it's turning out to be some of the uh, most successful growing method that I've used. I mean, hydroponics is very successful. It's almost like cheating, but I don't think it's as true to organic as this is. So, all right, listen, that's it. Quick video. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have subscribed so you don't miss any of these episodes. All right, we'll see you back here at my home market garden on the next video.